Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Can we call for that daily bread? Say with me, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now we're looking at tithing and offerings. And I'll show you how the disciples or the apostles or disciples taking this gospel to the Gentile church. There is nothing new. See that now? But then the Holy Ghost is now trying to communicate to the Gentiles how to give. God has already taught the Jewish people. There is nothing new you're going to tell the Jewish man. You can't tell the Jewish man not to tithe. You're wasting your time. It's a it's a tradition, it's a custom for them. But then, now, understanding the principles of God, and they are going to teach the Gentile church, the Holy Spirit now bringing this truth to the Gentiles, but the vessels are being careful. Yeah. So, they couldn't come out to say, you were tight. It, it, it simply will look like they are bringing them into Judaism. And now that's what people want to oppose. But you see, when, when the Holy Spirit, now that's what the Holy Spirit does. Hey, um, I was sharing, we, we, the first part we we're sharing on first fruit. Now, I began to receive testimonies, right? From people who didn't understand first fruit. But hearing the teaching, begin to say, huh, now I understand what the Lord was making me do all this while. When I got my first job, when I got my first pay, I just felt it wasn't right for me to, um, to eat it. I, I didn't know these teachings, but I actually gave it. I said, now you see, now what happened to that person? No teacher, nobody commanding him to do anything, but the Holy Spirit in him. So now, when the person now hears that there is a teaching called first fruits, and the person says, ah, now I get it. Oh, so that was what I was doing. Now a name has been given to what the Holy Spirit is making you do. Now you have an understanding, you can communicate it. It's the same thing happening here. So read that again, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, from verse 1. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store. As God has prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. See that now? So he says, every first day of the week. Now, why did he say first day of the week? Maybe that's how they close their books. Now, he wasn't telling them to bring animals and, and, and crops. <laughs> Praise God. He says, collection for the saints in Jerusalem. It was money they were putting aside. Now, mm, 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 mm. watch this. And when I come, whomsoever you have approved by your letter, them I will send to bring your liberality unto Jerusalem. And if it, and if it be meet that I go also, they shall go with me. Now, you know, he, he began to he began to tell them, now let's look at something else. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's look at something else, another scripture. And let's look at first, Second Corinthians chapter 8. Second Corinthians chapter 8. <clears throat> from verse 1 
from verse 1. Watch this now. Moreover, brethren, we do you we we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For it, for to their power I bear record ye, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we should receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hope, but first they gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God, in so much that we desire titles that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. Now, he was giving testimony of the church in Macedonia. He said, these guys were so willing to give. Now, what giving was he talking about? This collection. So they, they introduced this teaching to these churches and they were excited how they responded to it. Now, now imagine, it's the same thing that happens you know, you, you're going somewhere and you know this is what God wants them to know. But then you're thinking like, ah, I hope these people will not think that we came to collect their money. And then you teach it and you see their willingness and joy like, whoa! <laughs> whoa! But you see, their thoughts then was how to take this thing to Jerusalem. Because they felt that's where the temple was. That's where the blessing is. You see that now? Now that's where the early church was mistaken. But then you understand that it's a growth process. Are you get what I'm saying? It's a growth process. Now we see also in um, 2 Corinthians chapter... Now this is popular. Second Corinthians chapter 9. Okay, chapter 9. Verse 1. For as touching the ministering of the saints, it is superfluous for you, for me to write to you. For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia. I see what Paul was doing, telling them, look, the Macedonians are great. Then he comes to tell that, look, man, I told the Macedonians that you guys were great. <laughs> God. That is what Paul was doing. So he says, um, thank you, Holy Spirit. For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal have provoked very many. I told them you guys were too much. And man, it stirred them up. Now, what do you think was going on? The Holy Spirit was introducing this message of giving to them now when we say the message of giving it's it's that's the general word we use but you see as they grow now if you read down he says uh, if you read down he kept saying you know that's why he says let every man give as he has proposed in his heart so let him give now this was the introduction so when, when people talk about oh there's no uh, there's no titan in the new testament but people were asked to give willingly understand something what you teach in class one is it's simple it's basic but as you graduate you begin to realize that every teaching there is nothing new to teach every teaching as it grows deeper will begin to conform to the ordinances that God has set previously. So that's why they started here and the more the church grew and began to understand and people began to come to this point like, but wait, this thing we do, is it not the same command that God gave to Abraham and gave to the children of Israel? 
that they tithe 10%. Like, yeah. Oh, so I can be giving 10%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, not because it is small, but because you realize that God actually ordained this thing beforehand. See? And say, no, tight is, is part of the law. Hey, hey, hey. Are you a lawless person? There is nothing that is not in the law. Everything we do in God is part of the law. No, the law of... Hey, tithing came. God instructed Abraham to tithe. Moses, in giving the law to the children of Israel, added it. You understand? He added it. With more specific instructions on what to do with the tithe. We talked about that last week. Now then, the Holy Spirit has been given to us. And by the Holy Spirit, Ali brought Remember, he said, through us, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now that we have the Holy Spirit, and we have established that the tithe belongs to God, it doesn't belong to any man, it belongs to God. If it belongs to God, and God is alive, then we that are alive with Him ought to give Him what belongs to Him. So how do you do that? <laughs> so how do you do that? I'll tell you. The tithe belongs to God. He commands that we put it aside for Him. So you put it aside for him. And now it's your responsibility to go before him and tell him, Lord, I have your money. What should I do with it? But the practice of putting aside, that one is an old time and still present practice. The intention was never when you come to church service, after the message, you now bring money. They now say it's time for offerings. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Follow the practice even in the New Testament church. It's as people earn, they put aside. Paul said at the beginning of the, every week, put aside as God has blessed you. Are you seeing that? As God has blessed you. The same practice they were practicing in the Old Testament. So, now, they put aside, you put aside God's money. You come to this understanding that before we even started putting aside, God has actually commanded. And what is the purpose for this command? That the blessing will come to God's children. So you take God's money to him. You don't send it to Jerusalem. Mm -mm. Now that's the practices that were not perfect that we're not right you ask the owner because the owner didn't say through you all the families of jerusalem will be blessed he said all the families of the earth will be blessed now in the early church they were concerned about the jerusalem church the, the jerusalem saints but there are saints in your village there are saints everywhere hey so now and this is the perfect thing Perfection has come today. And what is that perfection? I take God's money to God. And I ask him, Lord, I have your money. What would you have me do with it? Now, it is his responsibility to command you, send it to the saints in Jerusalem. Send it to the saints in your village. Send it to your, the saints in the next street. Send it to the saints in that church. Send it to the saints in... Do you understand what I'm talking about? It, he is the one that knows exactly where his money is needed and where his money is, is to be deployed. He is the only one that knows. And it is his job to instruct every seed of Abraham. You see that now? So as God's seed, 
as Abraham's seed, realizing that there is a promise that has been made that all the families of the earth be blessed. And I find myself here. I receive blessings. I put the tithe aside. And then, Lord, what would you have me do with it? Send it to so and so. Thank you, sir. It's his money. But then when we do in obedience to him, we connect ourselves to the flow of his ordinance and the prosperity he has designed for the earth. So titers get prosperous. Yeah, but, but I know titers that are broke. Find out what they know. Some are tightened because they feel compelled. So they grumble. You see that grumbling? I don't know if I don't tighten now. My pastor will know. You now call me and say, uh, I've not, we've not been seeing your tight. Now that's where there's a problem. You see that grumbling because you feel you are forced to do it. You will not prosper by that. Because he that sows sparingly, if you read the Amplified Translation, he that sows sparingly and grudgingly will reap also sparingly and grudgingly. See that? He can reap with grudge. Who will now be giving you with grudge? The angels. So let's just give this one something and let it not be as though we are wicked to him. But can this guy, eh? Uh, 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 left for me, eh? Can't, he would, he would not. See, but, but you know, we have to fulfill the will of God. Angels grumble when you give grudging. But when you give with the understanding that hey, I, I love hey hey, I, I I must read the scripture to you before we close. The Amplified Version. The Amplified Version, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Oh, la puskili bread de ne katane kataya. Verse 6. I'm reading the Amplified Classic. Remember this He who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. Now, watch this part. And he who sows generously that blessings may come to someone will also reap generously and with blessings. Take note of that. He who sows generously that blessings may come to someone. Why are you giving? Oh, the blessing. Of, so when I pray concerning my tithe, and the Lord says, I want you to take that tithe, or I want you to take this part of the tithe and give to so and so person. Okay, sir. So now it, it's gone from me. See, I take that blessing, I take that money, and I said, hey, God sent me to you. Now, when I say God sent me to you, what am I doing? I am giving to that person for, with one intent, that blessing. So I leave that person with this thinking. You mean God remembered me? Yeah. What's that? The blessing has come to you. I didn't do anything. And it's not like I worked for you and you paid me. I am just on my own. You say God sent you to me. Yeah. Wow. It means God knows me. Yeah, he does. I mean God loves me. Yeah, he does. This is the blessing of the Lord. He loves me, so he blessed me. Yes. He said, the one who gives like that, your joy is, Lord, that guy knows now that you love him. You have blessed him. You also will receive my blessing. There are people who, they never get anything until they do something. Nobody freely gives to them. Check your giving. 
Because sometimes people give so that somebody will be, someone will like them. You know, that's why this whole church giving thing. You know, ah, let the pastor know that I'm the greatest giver. That mentality is wrong. You are not giving that the blessing will come on the church or on the pastor. You are giving so that you will be recognized. And lots of people do this. So at the end of the day, they are not blessed. Because see, that recognition becomes your blessing. When the pastor comes out to say, Ah, so-so brother is the highest giver in this church. That recognition, you have received your blessing. So there is nothing else God is going to give to you. But when you give, and all that's in your heart, let this person know that God loves him. And you go before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm so glad you remember that person and you blessed him. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad you used me. And that's all. Oh, God too will arrange so much so that you will receive so much back in return with blessings. My time is up. Praise God. This is why we tithe. This is why we set 10% apart. And this is why we are faithful to God where it's concerned. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.